Welcome everyone, I am the Depressed Eeyore and this is Kingdom Death Monster. So, this is another discussion video and this one we're going to be talking about... Intimacy. <laughs> so, um, this is probably... I don't really want to say controversial, but it's uh, definitely been a, lot, a discussion in a lot of uh, various little forums I've been looking up. Um, discussing kind of the balance for... Um, the intimacy tables and the choices and the reason it stands out so much is supposedly this was done on purpose like i guess to kind of explain for kingdom death monster for those who haven't been watching me play for some reason and decided to start with this video um throughout kingdom death monster certain once you hit certain points in the game or do certain things in the game or just things happen to you it will cause an event where you have to make a choice about how your society your how your settlement's going to handle um, that issue in the future so for example the first time you die first or the first time a survivor dies they have to you have to decide whether or not to bury them in which case you get graves or you can choose to harvest them for parts which in that case you get cannibalized um, and for the most part all the choices are reasonably balanced. I mean, you can try to do some arguments between Graves and Cannibalism, saying that Graves is better for late game, while Cannibalize is better for early game. From my experience, they're both rather useful. Um, cannibalize in late game can get, potentially let you go for th more things like um, the higher tier buildings and things like that, and you just have more resources to throw around. Um, and, I mean, there's some positives and negatives for all the choices, but in the case of a certain event called New Life, which happens after you do your intimacy, you get the choice between either raising your, your um, children with love, which you get Protect the Young, which lets you roll twice and pick the result for your intimacy table, or you, have to, you can go with Survival of the Fittest, where you take away the children's toys and give them sharp stones and just have them start learning how to fight at an early age in which case you get plus one survival limit and when you roll for the intimacy you have to roll twice and pick the lowest but all your newborn survivors start with plus one strength so this is the early, earliest way to start with plus one strength if you're not doing any rules variants the problem is this choice is extremely lopsided because the benefits of survival of the fittest do not match its penalties and the benefits of protect the young is rather drastic so and it's not really the these two cards alone cause the unbalance it's also the, the intimacy table itself so this is the base game intimacy uh, table uh, by the way uh, I will be going over the intimacy tables for the some of the expansions because the expansions have their own intimacy tables um, in which case if you don't want to be spoiled on any sort of events and things like that um, I will be going over Sunstalker and Dragon King, which both have their own campaign variants with People of the Stars and People of the Sun. So if you don't want to be completely, if you don't want to be a little bit spoiled on the, the the rules for intimacy on those two particular expansions, just be forewarned. I will be going over them because some of the stuff they do there is a bit, it's it's interesting. It does change things and kind of it might be some things to consider when you're trying to rebalance the base game. So, let's uh, go over the intimacy table. There's essentially 11 results that you can get, um, assuming you can get the plus one. There are ways to get uh, bonuses for this, which I'll go into later. But essentially, you're going through 1 to 10. You're rolling a d10. Uh, the first time you do intimacy, it'll just be a single d10 roll. And there is essentially a 70% chance that you'll get a successful birth. And a 30% chance that you will fail in the birth and at least one person will die. So, this only applies on the first time you do it. Well, I can't say the first time. It applies until, uh, until you get a um, principle involving new life. 30% uh, chance of death uh, for intimacy in this sort of setting uh, mostly fits. I mean, we're talking about a setting that you, the first thing you learn is language. How to speak to each other so we're talking a pretty primitive society um, the only thing that kind of stood out and really kind of did 
rubbed me the wrong way is the one result here, which is the people, can the couple cannot bear the weight of the world. They clasp hands and march into the deep and endless darkness. The nominated survivors are dead. I mean, I get the idea behind it. Like, this is supposed to be this, I mean, this is a, it's, it's hard to convey how bleak and oppressive this, this setting is. Um, but at the same time, I mean, humans are still animals. I mean, essentially, we're all animals, and it's just we happen to be, uh, we have sapiens and all that fancy stuff, I suppose, is the, is the term. But, um, I mean, there's a, there was a better, originally I was like, why would the, the I mean, at, at first I was thinking, okay, maybe th this result is just to ensure that there's a way for the male to die. Because two and three is only the female dies, but the male suffers, like, insanity and disorder, which, you know, kind of makes sense. Um, but in the case of this, it's just like, okay, but instead, because the way that intimacy works is you're picking two people, like, okay, you two need to breed so we can, you know, keep our settlement going. And their response is, well, we're just going to wander into the darkness and die. It's, it's like, I guess take like a, another sort of like scenario, like a zomb like a zombie setting. And, you know, humanity is kind of, you know, getting run down by, you know, the zombie infestation. And a male and female say, you know what? Instead of fucking, let's just run into that zombie horde and die. And it just doesn't fit. I mean, I, for one thing, if, if the, if the couple look, you would probably notice that the couple is not all there if they are considering just walking into the darkness and dying. Um, now, a, a way to make this fit a little bit better is just take this two and three results and just make it a little bit more extreme. Be like, okay, the, the, the child and the female died, and then the husband, uh, well, the, the male parent was like, okay, I can't handle this anymore, and then wanders in the darkness or dies, or commits suicide. And that's a way to kind of make it fit a little bit better, rather than them just being like, all right, well, we're just going to give up. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's kind of the situation. 30% chance of death, 70% uh, 70 chance of life, and if you succeed in getting life, you will have a chance to do your uh, principal new life event. So, with that, with um, probably the one thing that stands out about this table that's that makes it difficult to balance is it's is it only deals in extremes. There is no middle ground on this table. It is either you die, it's either you lose population or you gain population. There is no middle ground. There's no if you have a miscarriage, the 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 uh, the mother dies in in also not in all cases here. There's no situation where it's like, okay, you just fail to have the child, uh, the, the ch child fails to, you know, survive the the, uh, the birth, and you know the mother and father have to deal with that. There is not a, there's that option does not exist. It's it's you fail the 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 child fails to be born and the mother dies, and then of course the the father has to deal with the the consequences. So. That's the that's kind of the biggest issue. You have this issue where it's just all extremes. You have no way to handle it. Now, one of the ways to try to balance this is, of course, change this entire table. But changing the entire table is going to be it's it, it's not going to be easy because it any any sort of making it too nice will make it so um, protect the young is less viable. It becomes less viable, and then you know makes one makes one more worthwhile because. Remember, protect the young. All it gives you is the ability to roll twice and pick the result. It doesn't actually give you any other additional bonuses uh, by itself. And yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. It's if you end up causing the table to be too lax on its pun on its penalties, protect the young becomes useless. But if you make it so it's too harsh, survival of fitness fitness becomes unviable. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some num. well, let's take a look at some numbers first. So, here's your base game. Um, I do have this middle section called Baron, but we'll go into that later, because that's a more of an expansion thing. But, here's the base game. If you have no principle, you have a 70% chance of life, 30% chance of death. If you have Protect the Young, which is where you roll two dice and pick the result, 
Now, granted, for some odd reason, you can always pick death. You can always pick death if you want to, but there's no. I'm 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 assuming the player is picking the best possible result when rolling two dice. So, um, in that case, that thirty percent chance of death when you're rolling two dice becomes a nine percent, which means you have a ninety-one percent chance of life, nine percent chance of death. So, a one out of ten chance that you'll lose anyone. I'm not going to really go into the details about possibly losing both, you know, both parents or just one of them. We're just going to focus on purely gaining and losing population. So, what does this mean for survival of the fittest, where you have to roll twice and pick the lowest? In, in other words, you always have to pick the worst result. It's a coin flip. I mean, you're talking about 51% chance of dying and a 49% chance of actually succeeding on a birth. And in this game, population is pretty significant because there's so many ways to die outside of you know the intimacy deaths. You can die from combat, you can die from hunt events, you can die from story events, you can die from settlement events. And these are all completely random, and some of them, there's no die roll involved, it's just you're going to die. For example, if you ever draw murder, you're always going to lose at least one person, no matter what. So, it's a... Uh, it's pretty drastic. I mean, I looking at the numbers. If it, it definitely, I, I could see the person that made this game wanted to make the death go down compared to having no principle, and then for fittest wanted wanted to go up. Now we all could see just how lopsided this is and how drastic it is. And now I've read over forums and various discussions about. You know, survival of fittest and why this is like so lopsided. Um, there have been people that have put up their playthroughs of survival of fittest and showing how ridiculous it is. Some people have gotten really lucky, in which case they've always succeeded in the co they've mostly succeeded on the coin flip, so the population's been stable. But for other people, they literally lost majority of the population not through combat, not through event, uh, not through uh, hunt events or anything like that. They lost majority of the population through attempting to breed, which is so backwards it it doesn't it doesn't fit right as far even for the setting i know the setting is supposed to be very harsh and has rule of death and where you're generally going to fit it's the game hates you and wants to kill all your people but in this case this event is supposed to be about trying to you know breed and expand your population and imagine imagine having a any sort of species or creature where 50 percent of the time the parents just die from trying to, you know, breed. It just, it feels, it doesn't feel right, even in this setting. Because you're still animals and you're trying to survive. survive. In survival of the fittest, you should be still doing reasonably well on, you know, childbirth. It doesn't mean you're just killing all your people. But, I'm trying to get, get my thoughts together for this. But now, supposedly, the yeah, I. Some people have tried to excuse this by saying this is just a hard mode, but I don't really see that because it's just RNG, not really difficulty. Um, some people, uh, I have heard that the designer, this was one of the pillars for his design was, you know, family first, which was a kind of a weird pillar to have in a game like this, which means this is why Protect the Young is so favored because it's all about, you know, love and nurturing of the of your young. Um, and if that's the case, I'm not. I, it's a pillar that didn't, doesn't fit with anything else. At least it doesn't fit in the game. And I know a little bit about kind of having your pillars for designing a game. Um, for one of my team projects, I had to make a capture the flag game, and our t we did sort of a we decided on like a robot, you know, you know, robot wars type of game where there's robots shooting each other and stuff but one of the pillars we had for it was actually comedy where we were trying to make it very humorous kind of like a like the turrets from portal type of humor type thing but every time we've but everything we did kind of towards to try to get humor into the game always fell flat it never really it never really resonated with any of the uh any of our audience it didn't resonate with anyone that you know reviewed our game and things like that and we eventually just said, "Okay, this is not working. We need to just drop this pillar. We're not going. We're not. The comedy is not working, and it's just it's taking away from the rest of the game. And so we dropped it. 
But in this case, it looks like the person that made this game. Sorry if I don't remember their na his name, but but um, he stuck to this pillar till the very end, and he purposely to the point where he purposely made this an unbalanced choice. I have read that supposedly he did this on purpose, where this choice is not supposed to be a real choice, which is weird because all other principles are a relatively relatively balanced choice, but not this one. And the fact, and some people, you know, try to back him up by saying, you know, this is his him expressing himself through his art type thing. But for one thing, I should still be able to judge it because art art could still be judged. But in the case of games, which games are definitely art, I definitely agree with that. The things that make games art is part of is things like their how they're designed and how they're rules interact with each other it's not just purely you know the story or purely the artwork or the art style or anything like that and the worst thing you can do um in the case of games especially as an art form is to try to force it try to force that like the artistic aspect of it and that's what it feels like it feels like he just forced this as he he had a pillar that was a an, his view of you know you family first type thing and you wanted to force it down our throats essentially and that's what he did with this where you have to pick if you don't protect uh be a very nurturing family even if you happen to be someone that i don't know is accepting the freaking darkness like this one where you <laughs> if you happen to be accept the darkness and you have this wonderful face when you're raising raising a nurturing family i mean if you don't do that you're gimping yourself in this game and that's and that's the problem and that's why i tried to ex kind of explain that in my playthrough i did still pick protect the young but i've been trying to find ways to balance survival of the fittest so you can it be more viable and that's kind of what this video is about so let's uh let's talk about um some options you can do with this now one of the things that the options i uh presented in my playthrough was the idea of just doing, rolling one die instead of two dice for survival of fittest that would essentially change it back into a 70 30 uh chance which is still a bit lopsided um i did this with my some of my military friends and i mean they did survival of fittest and it definitely helps like if you can get it to work but at the same time rolling that natural one and losing two population is extremely rough and it's really hard to deal with um and it's nothing's worse than in this game than rolling intimacy and losing population that's probably the worst thing to ever happen is you have an opportunity to gain population instead you lose population um so with 70 30 it's pretty rough and one of the things you can do in this game at least in the base game is you can if you have face painting there's an endeavor for it called founder's eye and you essentially have a 70 percent chance per endeavor to go ahead and get plus one to any rolls on the intimacy story, uh, intimacy story event uh story event the settlement phase now thinking about this i think you can do this multiple times i don't i think it stacks because there's it doesn't say you can only do it once Usually I only do it once because it is what it is. But yeah, with Founder's Eye, you can potentially make it so every time you succeed, you reduce that chance of death by about 10%. Um, for things like, for survive, for uh, Protect the Young, base painting is kind of not that useful. But um, this is your essentially your only way to get bonuses on your intimacy um, story event. And this requires you to get paint. You have you have to get paint and face painting, so you essentially have to devote at least two um, innovations to, towards getting this, assuming you draw the right cards. Um, now, the reason I'm, I'm showing face painting is to show that there are ways to get bonuses. Um, one of the ways I also uh, tried out for Survival of Fittest is doing 1d10 plus 1. Um, so with my military friends, I did just 1d10, and it's... We're... I mean, I haven't played it. I, we haven't continued it in for a while, but uh, one of the issues was population. We we were always struggling with population. We had trouble just keeping double digits in most cases. 
Um, that being said, we do have Clan of Death on top of Survival of the Fittest, which means you're essentially starting out with four stat bonuses, plus two strength, plus one accuracy, plus one evasion, which is pretty significant. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure even though we have a small population, all our population at least have four stat increases. So it's pretty significant. Um, but I did a, another playthrough where I just started showing, um, I introduced one of my friends, um, one of my online friends to this game, and we've been playing it, uh, we're about halfway through the game now. Um, and I showed off um, Survival of the Fittest again, and I was like, for this one I went ahead and did 1d10 plus 1. And um, she did choose Survival of the Fittest, so we been playing with that. Um, so with 1d10 plus 1, your table becomes a little bit different because 1d10 plus 1 means you only have a 20% chance of death and there's a 0% chance that you'll lose both parents. Which you can, I mean, you can kind of argue it being like, okay, survival of the fittest. These, if you're going survival of the fittest, maybe your people are not going to be, you know, so weak hearted that they'll just walk into the darkness and commit suicide. But I understand doing this also, you know, means that the only chance of even rolling a one is if you ever go um, protect the young. Now, to be fair, for protect the young, the only chance of getting uh, two people dead is a 1% chance. You have to essentially roll a double one. Um, but also giving it plus one to the result also increases your chance of getting new uh, two population instead of just one, which is a little concerning. Um, I did some math for it. It, I think at one point um, you might get a slightly higher chance of getting two population compared to Protect the Young, uh, but you'll still have a 20% death chance. And I think that 20% death chance is something is probably a good thing to target because with no principle you have 30% death chance. With protect the young you essentially have 10% and then for fittest you would have 20% chance. So with survival of fittest it would be like okay you get plus one strength and you get some you get that survival uh, additional survival point but you have twice you're twice as likely to suffer you know death. Um so yeah, I think I think one d ten plus one may be the right direction. The only issue, of course, like I said, is the fact that it's a higher chance, a slightly higher chance of getting um, plus two population. Um, if you have things like face painting, it um, I think uh, protect the young gets a little bit higher chance of getting uh, twins. Um, the reason, the main reason why. Um, Survival of the Fittest ends up getting a little bit higher chances, mainly because if you end up having hovels, it's, um, you end up losing a chance of getting plus two population, and instead you get, you know, a savior. This is also one of the reasons why I wanted to do, um, just one die roll, because if you don't do one die roll, your chance of getting, um, a savior is 1%. A 1% chance of getting a savior if you go, um, Survival of the Fittest, which is a bit weird. All right. So I think that's about it for the table, um, and kind of my my thoughts about um, the base game intimacy table. One other aspect that I've been kind of thinking about to kind of at least give a little bit of balance is making it sort of like instead of plus just a raw plus one, be more like tough. The way tough works is you get plus one to a uh, your result, but uh, but if you roll a one, you don't get that plus one. So it would still only be a 20% death chance, but you now have a 10% chance of suffering double death in, in case, you know, both parents die. I haven't tried it. I haven't tested it, um, but it's, it is an idea that I have in my head. So I think we've, uh, how far along are we? Oh boy, this is going to be a long one. So I'm going to go ahead and briefly show off some stuff on the expansions because the expansions kind of change things up a little bit. Um, principle wise, everything's kind of, the same. Um, one, let's go ahead and show off. Well, one th expansion thing I wish to show off is from the Flower Knight, and that is a fighting art that the called Otherworldly Luck. Otherworldly Luck during the hunt and settlement phase. Whenever you roll on a table, you may add plus one to the result. This may not exceed the highest possible result of the table. This will happen. This will work for hunt events, story events, endeavors, and settlement events. Um, I believe this only works if the character that has the fighting art is participating. So if you make this character a parent, 
for intimacy, this is a way to get plus one to the result without having to do any extra endeavors. Granted, this is a fighting art, and if you're playing with all the uh, fighting, all the expansions, that's a 1 in 47 chance of getting this, assuming you even get a fighting art anytime soon. But it's, it's an option that's there. So, just wanted to point that out. Okay. So, let's show off... I'm going to show off... Um, let's show, I'm going to show off the Dragon King first. So, Dragon King has People of the Stars, and it has its own intimacy table. Uh, for the most part, it works mostly. Well, I can't say it works the same. It, this is pretty. It has a pretty significant uh, different table. Um, I I can't really go too much into um, people of the stars and kind of how it's different because it has things like um, various uh, inheritance and stuff that involves becoming more like dragons. Um, we're just going to focus on what results you can get on the tables here. So if you look at the intimacy tables. A 1 is still, you lose to both people. But a 2 and a 3 is the child dies, but the female survivor lives. Instead, instead of dying, the female survivor dying and the male parent getting a disorder and plus 3 insanity, the female survivor instead gets destroyed genitals and, and uh, gains a scar. The scar is has some potential usefulness um, in, the, in this uh, People of the Stars. Um, but the destroyed genitals means essentially that instead of dying, she becomes barren, in which case she can't do intimacy anymore. Also, be getting destroyed genitals will also be um, give her a disorder. Now, everything else here is pretty much just plus one uh, population. I mean, there's some stuff about like plus one strength and getting dragon inheritance and stuff. That's kind of that's people of the star stuff. So. That's pretty much the gist of it. It's very, it's, it definitely has that thing what I wanted in the base game, where instead of having extremes, you have, you know, you have the two extremes, and then you have kind of a middle ground with the two and three, where the parents still live, but the mother can't give birth anymore. Which, I mean, that could potentially still lead to a downward spiral for your settlement, because if all your females happen to get this, then you're kind of screwed, because then you can't produce any children, but at the very least your population isn't going down, which is important. It also means that if you have any females that do get destroyed genitals, they at least you can just have them focus on combat rather than um, breeding. So that's kind of the gist of it here. I'll go a little bit more into it after I review the uh, Sunstalker. Now, something about the Sunstalker. People of the Sun in in the base game and in People of the Stars, whenever you get your first birth, you get to do your new life event. And the new life event, you get to pick your principal. You either pick Protect the Young or Survival of the Fittest. People of the Sun do not have this. People of the Sun start out with Survival of the Fittest. The moment you decide, okay, we're going to be doing People of the Sun, your people automatically already start with Survival of the Fittest. You don't get a choice in this. Which is what makes this a little bit more interesting because this is using the base game rules for survival of the fittest, which means you're rolling two dice and picking the lowest. Now, the way they make this a little bit more viable is a few things. One is you're doing you know, something called a water birth, and the way you do a water birth in this in uh, in People of the Sun is instead of having to try to do auguries where you only have about a thirty percent chance of actually getting intimacy. There's actually an endeavor on one of your starting uh, settlement locations that lets you just immediately trigger intimacy. Now, I believe in the case of um, deciding your partners for um, that particular intimacy, I think once you decide their partners, you can't switch them or something like that. I, I can't really remember exactly. But so in People of the Sun, you actually have full control over when you do intimacy. You don't have to rely on things like matchmaker or auguries. So that's kind of one way to help balance it a little bit. Though, like I mentioned before, having more opportunities for intimacy with survival of the fittest doesn't exactly give you more population. Because the problem is, is you're dying from intimacy. Now, the way people of the sun kind of handle this is if you look here on the left, you have ways to get bonuses. You have the purification bonus, which you can um, 
get uh, plus one per parent that's purified. So you can get up to plus two bonus for this. Now, if you get plus two bonus on this, uh, your chance of death becomes, it, it literally becomes uh, about 19%, which we'll get into later. But yeah, so in this, Survival of the Fittest is playing by the normal rules, so you're rolling two dice, taking the lowest. If you roll, now there's some special uh, special rules if you roll double tens and double ones. Double tens get you triplets, and double ones uh, get you both uh, parents killed. Now, what's also a little bit more harsh about this table is one, two, and three still kill both parents. <laughs> The only difference between double ones and getting, you know, one, two, and three is in the case of double ones, you cannot do any more intimacies or um, umbilical symbiosis for that year. Umbilical symbi symbiosis is an another way of getting a population in, in people to sign, but I'm not going to over, go over that. But yeah, um, you're still looking at about a 50-50 chance of dying if you don't have any bonuses. And as far as all the stuff here, it's pretty much the same. The rest of the table is practically the same. Um, but yeah, in this case, it's, it's all or nothing in this one. Instead of having a chance, uh, a, a reasonable chance of losing one population, you're, you have a pretty high chance of losing both parents in all cases. So it's either you gain one to possibly three population or you lose two population. But with the bonuses, this kind of balances this, itself out. Um, the only problem, of course, is trying to get these bonuses and then, you know, making sure that you, um, to get these bonuses, it's going to take endeavors. So if you want to pur purify both parents, now granted, once they're purified, they're purified. You don't have to worry about it again, but each purification costs an endeavor. And I, th I don't remember if you can do more than one per, uh, settlement phase or not. Also, if you get the Sun Eater, you get plus five to the results, but Sun Eater is a secret fighting art, so good luck on that. Um, but yeah, so I I do appreciate that this expansion does try to justify Survival of the Fittest, um, but it's definitely not something, it's still pretty iffy. But in the case of, it's the, in the case of Sunstalker, I would probably stick with whatever the, the base rules are because this game, this part is actually kind of designed for it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the table real quick. So let's zoom this out. So here's what we're looking at. Base game, 70-30, 91-9, 49-51. That's without any rules changes. If you end up doing my 1d10 rule, it would just be 70-30 for Survival of the Fittest. If you do 1d10 plus 1, you're looking at a 80-20. Uh, which is probably something that's more in line with the difference between Protect the Young. Now, if you go with Dragon King, the only chance of death is a lot lower, but you do have a chance of being scarred and barren. Um, and as you can see, that's, the table's pretty straightforward. If you have Protect the Young, you literally only have a 1% chance of death, which is pretty amazing. Uh, for Survival of the Fittest, you're still looking at only a, a coin flip for um, getting plus, uh, your population up, which is a bit rough. And if you're trying to do my 1d10 rule, I th I would probably do at least either the 1d10 rule, or if you're doing 1d10 plus 1, make it so if you roll a 1, you still lose bo both population. So, it's a bit rough. But I do like... I do like Dragon King's table, but I, I'm, I'm a bit wary about implementing it as part of the base game. Um, and then for Sun Soccer, of course, you only get Survival of the Fittest as your cho uh, choice. If you end up doing, um, if you end up doing, you know, plus two Purify, you're looking at an 81% and 19%. So if you end up getting both parents purified, it would look something like that, which is about what you would expect from survival fitness with my plus one rule so it might be something to consider um of course if you have things like you know under otherworldly luck or if you have um face painting and you take advantage of the um 
founder's eye and things like that, you can get additional bonuses. But overall, I think I think the, if you're doing the base game, I think 1d10 plus 1 is probably the most close to balance you can get. Um, and you still get majority of the benefits of Protect the Young, where if you, you get to roll two dice, you can get higher chances of getting um, saviors. And Survival of the Fittest, you have a higher chance of death, less chance of getting saviors, but you do have um, that plus one strength. And plus one strength in the early game is pretty significant. So I think that's about it. Um, sorry if I tapered off, sorry if I rambled a lot. Um, it's kind of just stream of consciousness trying to pick, pick apart the things here. I definitely like the Dragon King um, intimacy table. I, I wouldn't mind trying that out, though I'm not sure when I'll try out People of the Stars. I'm pretty wary about jumping into any expansions right now. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and just discuss this. Feel free to uh, put your comments and your thoughts below. I've I've seen various discussions and ideas about just doing you know 110, 1d10 plus 1. I've seen ideas where they change the intimacy table entirely. And uh, yeah, just feel free to voice your thoughts. This was kind of just a stream of consciousness discussion, trying to figure out things about the intimacy table. I, I really I really like Kingdom Death Monster, but the, the decision that the designer made about Survival of the Fittest and Project the Young was kind of a huge stumble, I feel. And I want to make it so this is a viable choice for two um, for both paths, because the more choices you have in that game, uh, just adds more to the replay, replay value of the game, as well as just the general well, it just makes the game more fun. <laughs> Simple as that. All right. I think that's about it. I am the Depressed Eeyore, and this was Kingdom Death Monster discussing about intimacy. See you guys later.